Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. Is this as good as the Grand Seiko? Let's find out. This is not your ordinary Seiko, it is the King Seiko. A brand that was reborn in the year 2022. King Seiko has a lot to offer and this is the 110th Anniversary Limited Edition, the SPB365J1. In case you didn't know the history, in the 1960s when Seiko opened both the Grand Seiko Suwa Seikosha factory in Nagano and the King Seiko Daini Seikosha factory in Tokyo, the two factories were competing against each other to see who could produce a higher level of quality, precision and beauty within a timepiece. Ultimately, it was Grand Seiko who was chosen as Seiko's sole flag bearer for their luxury segment. A couple of decades later, we now have the return of the self-proclaimed king. Perhaps looking for round two? Does it have what it takes to live up to that name? The case here is made out of stainless steel with quite a few sharp edge design as seen here on the Lux. Predominantly, they are all brush finish at the front and side of the case, save for the edge on the Lux that is handsomely polished giving out that bling. The polished surface is probably Zeratsu style. Even if it's not, I will say that it is as close as it can get. The angular cuts kinda remind me of the Sharp H series. If you think that the Sharp H series can be coiled as the baby Grand Seiko, the King Seiko here is probably a better fit. If you've missed my review video on the Sharp H series, I'll put a link in the description below. This timepiece has a 37mm diameter, is 12.1mm thick and 43.6mm lug to lug. For a modern watch, it is pretty compact. However, proportion-wise, I feel that the King Seiko could probably do better. Perhaps reducing the size of the lugs or have a 18mm lug width instead of 19mm. The fixed bezel here is rather tall, however, they are all polished finish. The bracelet here is a controversial one. You either like it or hate it. Whilst the design may look a little dated, I must say that it is pretty comfortable, and it is not a scratch magnet. The front of the 7-piece link are brushed and so is the side. The bevel of the 1st and the 7th link are polished and so are the inner parts of the inner links, which has a way to reflect light vividly. The clasp here is a deployment clasp with a dual push button release. Because it is a limited edition, it does come with a special pouch and an additional leather strap. Underneath the closed case bag is a 6R31 caliber workhorse. The case bag and the crown has the new King Seiko emblem. Personally, I think a crown emblem would probably be better suited instead of a shield, since it is King Seiko, LOL. The box shaped sapphire crystal is equipped with AR coating on the inner surface. The unique design is inspired by the birthplace of King Seiko, i.e. Kameda in Tokyo. Kamedia used to be an island shaped like a turtle shell, hence the turtle shell stamp on the dial. The texture dial has a dark brown gradient hue which has a hint of gold in the center. The design on the hands and indices are similar to those used in the Grand Seiko. The hour and minute hands are dolphin shaped. The second hand is painted in gold without a pin cap. The markers are chamfered on two sides, Zerasu style, with lines engraved in the center, whilst the 12 o'clock marker maintains the iconic double baton with diamond press design. The name Seiko is in gold and it's applied. The words King Seiko Automatic, Japan 6R31-OODOR2 and the minute minute tracks are all painted on in white. In a way, this timepiece is pretty good looking. The hardware is comparable to that of the Grand Seiko. However, the movement is something that can be improved. I don't think the objective here is to market to those sitting between the Seiko and the Grand Seiko as we already have some Seiko timepieces that are trying to hit above their waist and some GS timepieces that are more affordable. 
Perhaps this is King Seiko's way of making an entrance in an attempt to first dominate the mid-range section and then slowly working its way up. A little friendly rivalry is good for the business, and perhaps this is just the beginning of something great to come. Only time will tell. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to support me, and I really appreciate it and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.